Hello students, today we shall go ahead with the continuation of polymer chemistry. In the last class we had completed plastics, today we shall go ahead with fibers and elastomers. So in this one we shall first deal actually with actually what is temperature for most materials we are going to deal with temperature and boiling point and with this temperature there is going to be the matter experience a change of state that is from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. For thermoplastic materials we are concerned with glass transition temperature, melting temperature. Glass, let us know actually what is glass transition temperature and melt temperature. Glass transition temperature describes the temperature at which amorphous polymers undergo a second order phase transition from rubbery viscous amorphous solid to brittle glassy amorphous solid. Coming to melt temperature, for semi-crystalline materials, the melt temperature is the temperature at which the crystal melts. <coughs> Once the crystals are melted, the material generally flows very slowly. So today coming to fibers, fibers are polymeric materials from which man-made fibers are formed. The characteristic properties of fiber forming polymers are they exhibit high tensile strength, very high rigidity or stiffness and undergo irreversible deformation. For imparting these properties, the molecule should have very high DP that is degree of polymerization again uh, coming back to this one like how do molecules appear in liquid state amorphous state and in glass state and with uh, glass transition temperature and melt temperature how do they be how are they be converting into crystalline where the molecules cannot move that is the chain movement is going to be restricted coming to the properties of these fibers to exhibit the properties of a fiber the molecule should neither exhibit localized segmental mobility nor overall chain mobility. They should be packed very close to each other in a highly ordered manner and should be held together by strong interchain cohesion forces which resist deformation and do not allow any relative movement between the chains. The material should have high crystalline mobility. Coming to the properties continuation, these can be increased through structural regularity, polar groups in the repeat units and stiffening units such as aromatic and cyclic rings in the chain backbone. Since branching reduces crystallinability, it should be avoidable. This is in brief the molecular engineering of the fiber forming material. So these are some of the polar groups and the main chain and the side chain where molecules are going to be taken into consideration. So these are the molecules wherein we are going to consider the chain branching linear which is going to increase the uh, um, chain thickness. So these are going to be the linear molecules with some branching in linear molecules. Coming to the used temperature in fiber former, one likes to emphasize the solid state wherein the segmental as well as molecular mobility are forbidden. A 100% crystalline, crystallinity although desirable in dif is difficult to achieve and hence crystalline as well as amorphous components in the material can be taken. The melt temperature should be above the used temperature such that the crystalline component in the solid state. The glass transition sh temperature should be much higher than its used temperature so that whatever little amorphous components may be present in the material do not exhibit segmental mobility. The melt temperature should not be so high that the material becomes untenable for processing. A good compromise would be to have glass transition and melt temperature in the range of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. So this is uh, where in the chain stiffness is increased by bulky side groups, polar groups and double bond. So these are to be avoided in fiber technology. In fiber technology, one cannot afford to go in for plasticization or cross-linking since both these will reduce the crystallinity. Molecular engineering takes care of crystallizability. A high crystallizable polymer need not have always high degree of crystallinity which depends entirely on factors such as crystallization temperature, 
रेट ऑफ कूलिंग रेट ऑफ सॉल्वेंट एवोप्रेशन एंड फ्लो ओरिएंटेशन फाइबर टेक्नोलॉजी एम्स एट अचीविंग मैक्सिमम डिग्री ऑफ क्रिस्टलिटी वन द फाइबर्स आर फॉर्म आइदर फ्रॉम सोल्यूशन और फ्रॉम मेल्ट वेन फाइबर इज फॉर्म वी ट्राई टू ओरिएंट द मॉलिक्यूल्स एंड बाइंड दम टूगेदर फ्रॉम द बिगनिंग इन ऑर्डर टू फेसिलिटेट एफिशियंट क्रिस्टलाइजेशन After fiber formation, to we draw the fibers further undergo tension so as to orient the molecules more unidirectionally. Such unidirectional orientation of molecules increases the strength and rigidity of the fiber in the direction in which it is drawn. So fiber length usually is going to be above hundred. Textiles are of main use, must have high tensile strength, usually highly crystalline and highly polar. these are usually formed by spinning extrude polymer through a spinnerite platinum plate with thousands of holes for nylon example rayon dissolved in solvent then pump through a die head to fiber forms these are fibers are drawn leads to highly aligned chain fibular structure next coming to elastomers in elastomers we usually consider butyl natural rubber that is polyisoprene epdm neo uh, neoprene nitrile etc elastomers are usually class uh, characterized by high deformation extremely flexible generally greater than 100% almost all are thermosetting with exceptions of tpe coming to elastomers here elastomers are rubber elasticity which represents the combination of softness stretchability resilience and toughness the chain molecules undergo uncoiling and recoiling on the application and release of a small force considering the case of a rubber band which undergoes coiling and uncoiling the chain should compromise flexible segments capable of attaining free rotation in unstrained state they should tend to take up more probable random coiled conformation such that the entropy factor is highest in the normal state when strained the chain should be highly should be able to get extended and be brought to more ordered conformation an ordered arrangement of chain molecules gives rise to partial crystallinity and also a decrease in entropy entropy factors the coiling and recoiling on the release of force there should be a sufficient interchain free volume to provide for unhindered segmental mobility during coiling and uncoiling the interchain cohesive forces should be should also be low enough so as not to hinder the free segmental mobility the individual chains should not undergo prolonged stretching slip past each other and get separated resulting the breakage of the material something should be present to hold individual chains together without permitting them apart while at the same time allowing sufficient segmental mobility chain mobility and chain uh, segmental mobility can be obtained by selected repeat groups made up of cc and co linkages and avoid avoiding bulky side groups on the repeat units by avoiding bulky side groups on the repeat unit aromatic and cyclic structure in the chain backbone and chain stiffness in case of dye in polymers an increase in cis content will lead to a better chain flexibility branched molecules will contribute towards an increased interchain free volume on account of the fact such molecules cannot assume close packing interchain cohesive forces can be minimized by avoiding polar groups in the repeat units cross link provides a suitable intervals will hold the molecules together and will not allow them to slip past each other and stretching rubber elasticity can be established by polymeric systems consisting of long flexible chain coils with very weak interchain cohesion and interconnected here through cross links to uh, to form a, a three dimensional network polymeric material to exhibit localized segmental mobility without overall molecular mobility should be amorphous in nature and should not should exist in rubber state for materials to be in rubbery state its glass transition temperature should be very much below the low flow temperature and the flow temperature must be above the used temperature 
the polymeric materials can be made to possess elastomeric property over a wide range of e, wide range of temperature or its used temperature range as an elastomeric material can be widened by pushing down the glass transition temperature as low as possible and pushing the flow temperature as high as possible to push down the glass transition temperature by plasticizing the material using either internal or external plasticization glass transition temperature can be lowered by copolymerization with small quantities of suitable copolymer this is internal plasticization external plasticization involves compounding the polymer with mutual mutually compatible high boiling liquids called plasticizers the plasticizers reduce the interchain cohesion in the polymer and favors segmental motion so this is going to be the tensile strength response of an electromer here this is going to be the amorphous chain and the uh, elastomer the, this deformation in a reversible case and the final chains are straight still cross linked thank you